everybody. Welcome to church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church appropriate dance moves you can do whenever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or maybe not. Or just, just let's go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Make sure it's on the face. See it on the face. Yeah. Bring it together. Here we go. Let it go. You take the stone, you let it go. You're unhindered by armor. Let that elbow sway. Elbow, 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 elbow. Okay. One of my personal favorites. Resurrection. You gotta get down to get back. Yeah. Keep working, it, guys. Keep working. You're doing great. I'm doing great. I'm getting a little tired. We gotta stomp hard, stomp hard, stomp hard. You're crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Yeah. Okay, good break there, good break. Good job, guys. Here we go, ready? Get that, get that whip going. Scare those tax collectors, those merchants. Merchants. Make sure you look afraid. And this is salt. You look back and salt, salt, salt. I'm getting to you. You're doing great, everybody. Oh, almost. Okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. Here we go. Close the end. One, two, three, four.
Happy Sunday! Hey kids! We are so glad you are here with us today. Who's excited about the end of the year? Yay! Summer's almost here and the weather's been just beautiful. Let's start off with our good morning song. This is a morning like no other. Now that we are all warmed up, let's sing um, the song, Holy is the Lord. Remember, here are the signs. Here's holy with H's, and the Lord is like you're putting on a seatbelt with an L. There you go. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we
gonna do a new song by Life Tree, and it's called The Power Shuffle. So everyone get up and let's dance. but first let's pray father god i just thank you so much for these kiddos and i can't wait till we are back together and we can um dance and sing and and worship you together again lord i pray that you would keep everybody safe and healthy lord that you would open up their hearts and their minds to the lessons today in Jesus' name we pray amen, amen. we'll see you guys Good morning, Flagstaff Bible Kids. I am so glad to see you again this morning. Can you believe it's the end of May already? Time is flying by. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about Jesus' genealogy. And if you don't know what that is, we'll talk about it in a minute. But before we begin, I want to give you and your family about 30 seconds to come up with as many words as you can to describe our Jesus. Are you ready? Okay, as I am sharing some of the ones I came up with, we'd love if you want to type some of yours, maybe in your Facebook comment section, or if you're on the YouTube channel, um, some comments about what you guys came up with as a family to describe Jesus. I have creator and friend. I have healer. He is almighty. He is powerful. He is strong. He's constant, unwavering. He's loving and all-knowing. 
He is trustworthy. He's our rock and our fortress, and he is God. So as we move forward, I'm going to come back to this because I have one more, but I want you to think about this next big picture question. So I, I shared that we're moving from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And as we do that, um, we're, we have a new big picture question. And it is, is Jesus God or human? So think about that for a few minutes as we continue. My grandma loves to study genealogy. So genealogy, if you, I told you we would come back to that if you aren't certain, is what? That's right. Your makeup, your history, your family lineage, right? And so I thought it would be fun just to show you a picture of some of my family lineage. So on the top there, we have my grandma and my mom. And I'm in the middle, about nine years old. And on the bottom are my great grandparents. So pictured in this little picture on my phone, I have four generations, right? My great grandparents came first and they had my grandma and she and my grandpa had my mom and my mom and dad had me. So that's four generations right there in that picture. And just like we have a history, we have grandparents, we have parents, we have great, great, great grandparents and all sorts of relatives, Jesus has the same. So the Bible tells us about Jesus' ancestors all the way back to Adam even. And this week, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Before he came to earth as a human being, God the Son was with the Father. No one created him. He has always existed. God created the first people. Ooh. Ooh. Adam and Eve. But they did not obey mm. him. All along, God planned to send his son to earth to save people from sin. At just the right time, Jesus came to earth as a baby. He was born to Mary, the wife of Joseph. Jesus is different than any other baby who was ever born because he is fully God and fully human. Like all people on earth, Jesus' family had a history, a family tree. Jesus had parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents, back and back for many generations. Jesus was born into the family of Abraham and the family of King David. Abraham had a son named Isaac. When Isaac had a family, one of his sons was named Jacob. Jacob was part of Jesus' family. Years later, a man named Solomon was born into Jesus' family tree. He married Rahab, who hid the Israelite spies when they came to Jericho. Rahab had a baby named Boaz. Oh! Boaz was a farmer, and he married Ruth. Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed. Obed's son was Jesse. Jesse had many sons. His youngest was David. David was just a boy when he was chosen to be Israel's king. King David liked to write. He wrote songs called Psalms, and some of them were about the time when Jesus would come to earth. Other people in Jesus' family were kings too. David's son Solomon was a king. King Jehoshaphat was part of Jesus' family, and so was Uzziah, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Josiah. God's people returned home from exile in Babylon. Then, Sha'alatel was born. His son was Zerubbabel. Later, Mathen came along. Mathen's son was named Jacob, and Jacob's son was named Joseph. Joseph is the man who married Jesus' mother, Mary. Joseph raised Jesus as his own son. Jesus was truly God's son, the Messiah. Jesus came to earth as a human. Jesus had earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, but his true father is God. Through Jesus, God kept his promises to Abraham and David. Jesus saves people from their sins and adopts them into God's family. 
the Old Testament really gives us a history of the Jewish people, right? So let's think back about some of the major history stories that we heard. Uh, God created the world, right? And then sin entered with Adam and Eve. Um, God promised to bless everyone, right? People through Abraham's offspring. Do you remember Abraham when he was not even certain that he would get to have any children of his own? God rescued the Israelites from slavery. Who helped? Moses, that's right. And Israelites were ruled by the kings and the judges, right? And sometimes they were obedient. Sometimes they were disobedient. And so the prophets then were sent to warn the people to obey. And then God punished his people, right, by sending them into exile. And then he brings them back to the promised land. So that gives us a little recap of all the things that we've gone over in the Old Testament. But the New Testament, in and the awesomeness about it is that God had a plan from the very beginning, from Adam, to save his people, which you and me, from sin. He planned to send a Messiah. Do you remember what the word Messiah means? That's right, a promised savior or deliverer for his people. So the Old Testament prophesies about all of the promised Messiah being born. It tells us that he would be born from a seed of a woman, right? And it talks about his lineage. Prophecies are made in Genesis, in Numbers, in Micah, in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, even in Psalms. His genealogy begins with Adam and Eve, right? He is a descendant of Noah's family even. He has the seed of Abraham's family. He is part of Isaac and Jacob's family. He is from the tribe of Judah. Jesus comes from the line of Jesse and his son David. Do you remember that God promised David that a king was going to come from his lineage, that would, his rule would never come to an end? Does Jesus still rule in our lives? Yes, it's true. So some other people in his lineage that I know we've talked about in weeks past were Solomon and his wife Rahab. Remember, she was the one that was hiding the Israelite spies when they came to Jericho. There's Boaz and Ruth, Obed, King Jehoshaphat, uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Josiah. After God's people returned home from exile in Babylon, remember we talked about that a few weeks ago, Nehemiah helped rebuild all of that. Then a couple other generations of people were born, and ultimately uh, there was Matan, and he came along, and his son was named Jacob, and Jacob's son was named Joseph. And Joseph married Mary and was part of Jesus' earthly family, right? So Jesus came as a baby in Bethlehem, and he was born of a father in heaven, God our Father, right? He was born to a virgin Mary, but Joseph and Mary helped raise Jesus here on earth. And so I want to tell you that just because God was his father in heaven, that didn't mean that Jesus stopped being God once he came to earth, right? He was still God, but he was also fully what? Man, you're right. So my big picture question, that was a trick. Because Jesus is fully God and fully human. That was the other word that I was, I was going to share with you a little bit later. Another word is that Jesus is God and he is human. As fully God, the entire fullness of God's nature dwells in Christ's body. That's in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. And as fully man, Jesus has a human body, a human mind, and human emotions. He felt all the things that we feel. He knew all the experiences that we experienced in a body, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our hearts. You can read about that more in Luke and in Matthew. God, you see, had been working out this plan from the very beginning. Through Adam and Abraham, Isaac, Rahab, Ruth, David, and others, God sent his son to save his people, including me and you, from sin. So as we wrap up today, let's do, uh, let's just thank God. Let's thank him for that incredible gift that he kept promises uh, to David and to Abraham and to generations past that he, he knew that we needed a savior and that he made that complete by sending us Jesus. 
God, we just thank you so much for this time to come together and to learn about your word. And we are excited to dive into this New Testament. Thank you for showing us um, that you are a God who keeps promises, that you are a God who has a plan. And even when we're confused or we don't understand or we don't, we don't know the whole picture, that God, you have been working out the perfect plan since the beginning. And we trust you with that. I thank you for our time together this morning. I pray that you would bless each of these kids and their families as they get ready for this coming week. Amen. Now, how many of you have been studying your verse? Good. This is our last week for May's Bible verse, so next week we'll get our new verse. But if you don't remember, we'll maybe work, <laughs> excuse me, work through a time or two together. And then... Uh, high five each other if you learned it. And kiddos, be sure to give your parents an extra high five if they learned it along with you. So our verse was Isaiah 40, chapter 40, verses 28 and 29. Are you ready? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. So practice that again a couple more times as a family today. Parents, maybe you can have a little verse celebration with your kiddos. Kiddos, you should definitely celebrate your parents if they got this one. Thank you so much for joining us for this lesson this week, and I'm excited to enter with you in the coming weeks into the New Testament and all that that has to offer us. But I am so grateful that we get to see, just like you and me, Jesus has a history, he has a lineage, and it's all laid out perfectly in the Bible for us. So explore that more maybe as a family this week. Here's Miss Beth for our fun craft for this morning. Good morning, Flag Bible Kids. It's Miss Beth, and I am so excited we were able to get together again today to have worship, Bible story, and craft time together. I cannot wait until the day we can be together again, but until then, I absolutely love that we can meet together each week and hear God's word. So today we started in the New Testament, which is so exciting. Last week we finished in the Old Testament. So now we're going to be starting in the New and continuing on in the New Testament. Um, so with starting in the New Testament today, we also had a new big picture question. And that question is, is Jesus God or is he human? So I know you guys heard about this earlier from Miss Emily. So look around, tell your sibling, your parents, whoever's in the room with you, tell them the answer to that question. That's right. As son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. Isn't that amazing? So today we talked about Jesus and we talked about his family. We learned that he was born a human baby into a human family. So for today, one of our crafts that we're gonna do is we are going to do a family portrait. So you can see right here, I wrote family portrait on the top. And then I did a picture of my family. So this is my husband, me, and my four kids. So you can do your family how it is now, or you can try and guess what your family might look like in the future when you start your own family. So God has given us all kinds of families and no family is perfect, but every family can be used by God to bless us and to teach us more about God. Isn't that awesome? Did you guys also know that you can be part of God's family? Because of Jesus and his death on the cross and his resurrection, that made a way for us to be forgiven of all of our sins and for us to be adopted into God's family. All you have to do is ask. You tell him that you want him in your heart and he is with you forever. He is never going to leave you. Even though people in God's family are not perfect, we can still love one another and help each other with God's power and with his help. Someday, all believers, and I mean all believers, we're going to be perfected at Jesus's return and the restoration of the world. One day, we are all going to be with Jesus. Anyone who has him in their heart is going to be with Jesus, and that is 
so amazing and such an awesome reminder for us. But for us to remember that, I have another craft for us to do. And in this one, it says, God wants us to be part of his family. So I did a family tree. So I drew a tree right here. And then all the little green spots on there, those are fingerprints. So me and my daughter, we did all the fingerprints on there to remind us that God wants us to be in the family with him. Um, and remember again, all we have to do is ask. So you can ask your parents, you can ask me, Pastor Joel, Pastor Paul. We would all love to share it with you guys. So let us know if you guys have any questions. So before I go, I'm going to pray and then I will end. Dear Lord, just thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for each and every kiddo that's here watching, Lord. Um, just thank you for the reminders today um, of how much you want us to be in your family. Thank you for the reminder of how we can be part of your family, Lord. And just the reminder of how much you love us. Um, how you want us to be with you always. You want us to be part of your family, Lord. Um, just thank you for that. Um, help us to have a good rest of our week, Lord. Um, and just be with us as we're going through um, this unknown time in our world, Lord. Um, thank you for everything that you've done for us. And in your name, amen. All right, Flag Bible kids, we miss you lots. Can't wait to see you. And we will hopefully see all of you guys soon. Bye.